Greetings, Captains. I am Wizard, and welcome to another Starfield Ship Build Guide. This is the Aegis. It is a Class B Corvette inspired by the ships from the Matrix. It has over 3,000 cargo, 98 or 99 mobility, depending on your weapon's choices, and it can hold 9 crew. In the movies, those ships rely heavily on mounted, controlled turrets for defense against the machines. So instead of just building a ship that looks like the ships from the Matrix movies, I decided to build a ship that also functions like the ships from the movies. And instead of showcasing this build with only one weapons loadout, I also decided to include my comparisons of two other weapons loadouts that are a variation on the one that you see pictured here. One of these does not have any turrets and is potentially the most devastating weapons combination that I have used yet. I highly recommend going with the one that I choose at the end of the video. I'm very excited to show you this ship and how to build it and I can't wait to hear all of your feedback on it but let's strap in and go build this thing. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Uh, if you are looking for a new location for a home base, check out my outpost guide playlist. There you can also learn how to build a Vitinia mine at level 14 that will produce all the credits you'll ever need. You can also check out my growing list of ship builds at my Starship Archive playlist, ranging from level 14 all the way through and above level 60. I also have some gameplay guides. Uh, one being shipboarding and capturing with no suppressors as well as a mission guide on how to get the razor leaf if you've not found that yet. Check out my general gameplay guide playlist. And I also have an FPS combat progression series that I have started and I intend to continue on. Check out the Becoming a God playlist to see how your character can go from no skills to all the skills. To build the Aegis exactly as I do in this guide, you'll need to be at character level 60 or higher. You'll need at least 668,000 credits at Commerce rank 4, you'll need Starship Design rank 4, you'll need Piloting rank 3, and you need to complete the mission Grunt Work, which is the first mission in the UC Vanguard quest line. Now, I start this build by purchasing a ship because Deimos Staryard sells a ship called the Aegis. This is not a redesign and so if you do not want to start with the Aegis and would rather build this over a ship you already have, feel free to do so. As long as you follow along the steps uh, with me as I do, you'll have no issues building this ship exactly the way you see it. The first step in this build is to visit the Deimos Star Yard. Now as I mentioned before, I am purchasing a ship here, but you can start with whatever you would like. If that's the case, skip this part, but we are going to get some parts here too. If you can't afford our ship right yet, save up. You will not regret it. Oh, I have the credits. Whenever I name a ship, I always make sure that a ship doesn't already exist in the game with that name. In this case it does, but it's a purchasable ship. So whether or not you're buying the Aegis to start with uh, doesn't matter. We're past this step now, so whatever ship you're starting with you can start following along. So the first thing we need here are two 30T hauler cargo holds. So get those attached to your ship however you can. And then we also need two 100CM ballast cargos. Get those attached, and these are available at other locations, but not every location, and they're not available at your outpost landing pad. So I'm simply grabbing these here because I came here to buy this ship, and I knew that these were available at this location as well. So to save myself and you some time, I'm grabbing these before we go. Now we can move on. Our next stop is in the Voli system. And as you guessed, we need to go to Neon and find Teo Astroneering. So once you get down to the showroom, go ahead and talk to Veronica. No ship's better in the settled systems. 
You ready to change your life? I just came here to buy some parts. Yay! Let's get you set up! Once you get through her, get into your builder, and we are grabbing two pinpoint 4G landers, and we're also going to get our engines here. So find the gear tab, and you want two pinpoint 4Gs. Put them wherever you can on your ship. And the engines we need are four Class B SAE 5660s. You can also get 6830s here, so any Slayton aerospace engine is available at Teo. The other good place I like to get these uh, is at the Stroud Eklund Star Yard. Once you've got those, you can move on. Our next stop is in the Purima system at the Red Mile. And you guessed it, we're getting a scan jammer. I have not joined the Crimson Fleet yet, and I don't believe there's anywhere else you can get these until you do that. Yeah. What? As cordial as ever. Okay. Take a look. Get into your builder. Find the equipment tab and attach a scan jammer. The last location that we need to visit to purchase parts is Hopetown. So find the system Valo and the planet Polvo, and here's where Hopetown is located. As you know, this is where Hope Tech is headquartered, so any Hope Tech specific part that you need can be found here. What we are looking for first is a 2x2 battle station. And you can use any other manufacturer's 2x2. Um, I chose this one for the interior layout and the exterior shape as it really lends itself well to the organic uh, overall shape that this ship needs. So make space for your 2x2 and do what you need to to connect any other modules that you may have disconnected in the process and place your 2x2 two two. and then you can only get the HAB spines from any manufacturer where you can get the larger HAB units as well so here we're going to get a Hope Tech HAB spine and place it at the front and then on this we can place our Commander 500 bridge the reason I chose this one, because the design is exactly the same as the Armstrong's, is for the cargo capacity. For the weight, these are really efficient and uh, can really help you squeeze a little bit of extra cargo capacity out of your ships. So once you pass the builder checks, you are finished here, and we can move on to our landing pad. I'm going to complete this build at my Indigo Ridge player base outpost. If you didn't see that build, the link should be on screen and it will also be in the description. So go to wherever you have a landing pad with Shipbuilder and let's get into this build. So the first thing we want to do as always is select all and delete. Now starting from scratch. We're going with a Hope 4 landing bay. This just really matches the theme of the ship really well. Next, you want to do a one by one companionway or storeroom, whichever you prefer. Attached to the front of that, I went with a Nova Galactic all in one berth B. Uh, same as the 2x2, two two, it is for the interior design of this module as well as the exterior shape. Now attached to the rear of the 1x1, one one, we want to do a row of four Deimos mid bracers. I am going to replace the front two with a workshop later, but there's a specific thing that we need to do to make sure uh, an erroneous ladder does not get spawned by the game. So then we can place our Teo landing gears that we bought, and then six Deimos 220CB landers on the outside of the central landers and the landing bay. Last thing we want to add down here is a Hope 5 landing gear. And this just gives the tail uh, a bit of visual support, otherwise the ship looks a little teetery. 
So next what we want to do is continue building up our halves. So we want to grab our 2x2 two two and have it connect to the 1x1 one one companion way. Now I couldn't use the attachment method here as it placed the hab in the wrong location, but if you can use the attachment, that's obviously always better and more reliable to control your ladders. Next to the 2x2, two two, I went with a Hope Tech computer core 2x1, and uh, I just think it works well with the, again, the matrix theme aesthetic that I'm trying to achieve on the inside with all the computers and screens. So off the back of the 2x2, two two, I went with the Deimos 3x1 living quarters, and this is kind of to serve as the main living quarters for the crew of the ship. Now using the attachment method on top of the 2x1 where you want your ladder to be, I used a Nova Galactic all-in-one berth B and then switched it to an armory because it didn't want to go in the right location. So the right thing to do would be to put your docker on top of the armory we just placed and I do it in a minute, but in front of the armory we want the captain's quarters. And you can go with whatever you want here again as far as manufacturer, but I'm choosing it for the exterior shape and the interior layout. I know that most of you will probably prefer different designs, so go ahead and use them if you wish. Now I'm just quickly going over where we're at right now. We've got our landing gears on the bottom, two Teos and one Hope 5. We have six Deimos. 220 CB landers and so far we have most of our habs laid out. Front of the 2x2 two two is the hab spine and on the hab spine of course goes our commander bridge. Now right underneath of the bridge, I chose the Teo nose cap because it most closely matches the top view shape of the commander bridge in the Armstrong cockpits. Nice way to finish off the lower portion of that nose there. Now before we start covering the ship up, you need a horizon weapon mount on each side of the Nova all-in-one. And the front two attachments, I went with portholes. This was the only place on the ship where I could place any windows. And then on the underside of the overhanging habs, we want to go for a Nova Cowling 2L BF on each side. This kind of gives a streamlined look to the Deimos landers when they're folded in flight. Now for the fuel tanks, you probably made this deduction from the uh, intro shots, but the M50 Ulysses is what we're going to use on both sides. And I'm fairly certain, but correct me if I'm wrong, I believe these have the best fuel capacity to weight ratio in the game. And now I'm realizing that I haven't placed my docker, and I could have generated uh, an erroneous ladder there, so... Before you place your captain's quarters, which is why I deleted it, put your NG20, sorry, NG2 docker from Nova on top of where you want the central ladder to be located. Then you can replace your captain's quarters if you had them placed as I did. Now we need to start working on the shape of this ship for some attachment points. You need two Deimos hull A's on each side of the ship right here. And just behind that, we need two Nova Cowling 2Ls. Just behind those Deimos hull A's. Now, just behind the docker, you want to go with a Nova Cowling 1L. And I use that rear attachment point so it automatically sets the orientation. On the front of the docker, you want a Nova Cowling 2L TF. Top 4 would be the TF. Just behind the fuel tanks, a Hope Cap, Hope Tech <laughs> Cap A. This is a nice transition from the round shape of the fuel tanks. Now let's get our grav drive on here, just behind the Deimos 3x1. 
and went with the Aurora 13G again for its grab jump thrust. And for the reactor, you can probably guess, going with the 104DS again. For its class and its weight, it produces a fantastic amount of power. Really love this reactor. And you need a Nova Kaling 2L, and it's the mid 1L, one length, and then the 100cm ballast shielded cargo attached to that. Now to attach our engines on the bottom, first we need the 30T hauler cargo holds, as these have attachments front, rear, and top or bottom, depending on how you flip them, but you will want them oriented in this way. And then on the back of the cargo holds, we want our SAE 5660 engines, one on each side. Now that these are in place, we've got attachments for our rear aesthetic features. And I use these stroud caps to try to capture the look of the large energy disks that emanate all the electricity in the, uh, in the Matrix trilogies on those ships. So you get one facing rear and one opposed to that attached right here and you need to place the rear one first on the engine because the cargo holds don't have that attachment on the bottom anymore so just like this now to kind of spice up the front of the cargo holds so they weren't such a blunt and flat face I used the Hope Tech pipes the four variation these really help to kind of uh, add a nice little detail here. And once you have those placed, go ahead and select both of your Stroud caps on the bottoms and move them up to the side attachment points on the engines. So that's the lower back portion of the ship complete. Now on the rear of the Nova 2x1, you want a Deimos cowling and then you want a Deimos Spine B. Duplicate the cowling and flip it. Duplicate one of the Deimos hulls and place it here. And then duplicate that cowling one more time, flip it and place it right there on the back. Now while we're here, let's put our shield on top of our cargo hold. And I chose the Vanguard Bulwark because for the shield capacity it is a really low weight. Just above it we want to go with the Deimos Wing E. And one on each side. And then to finish off the sides back here, we're going to go with a Deimos Wing A on each side of the reactor. One here, and one over here. Now since we have that placed, let's go ahead and duplicate this. And we're going to put one on each side of the upper Nova 2x1. Duplicate these again, and move those to the outside edge of the ship. Then you want to duplicate that, flip it, and place one just in front of the rear two. Now we have these negative spaces here and to close them off I use the Deimos Wing D and I like that little bit of an angle it has there. Now back here in between the shielded cargo and the Deimos uh, cowling the Stroud Engine Bracer B works perfectly because we're also going to place our uh, 200 cm ballast non-shielded cargos that we bought from Deimos. And you can see they fit in there perfectly. And that's a very interesting tail feature I thought. 
Now before we forget, right here on this Deimos Wing E, we want to throw our scan jammer on. And now we can get our last two engines. So duplicate the bottom ones and move them up to attach to the upper Deimos hull A. Now of course we want to replicate the Stroud nose cap features. So all you need to attach to the engine first with the rear and then attach the front one to that first nose cap that you placed. Now you can select these and duplicate them and move them up above the engines. But before you do that, it helps to attach your Deimos braking engines to the front of the SAE 5660s. And now you can duplicate your Stroud nose caps. And that's done. That's the main portion of the build of the ship and now we need to attach our weapons. So to finish that off, first we need to duplicate a Horizon weapon mount and move that up to the Nova Docker. One on each side. Now while I attach my weapons, after I put this equipment plate here, I want to talk to you about the decisions that I made on these weapons loadouts. So to go along with the theme of the ship, I thought it was necessary to have some rear-facing turrets. Now, for the inspiration, this makes sense. Uh, but as you know, I prefer to have all three weapon groups at my disposal when I need them. It is nice to have turrets covering the rear, um, but they are not always necessary or efficient and they do take away your damage potential as the pilot. So that was basically what led me to try out a few different loadouts with some different weapons and um, I actually tried several but I'm just gonna show three in this video and I'm going to save the rest for a future uh, more in-depth guide into combat and weapons choices. So here no matter which loadout I went with, I always had the Vanguard Obliterator auto projectors equipped on the ship. So these are a definite must. I really like these weapons. They are well balanced, do a lot of damage, and they fire fast and recharge fast as well, being in the A class. So play six of these. Um, and then for this first loadout, uh, as a supplement to the Vanguard Obliterators, I decided to try out the Vanguard Hellfire autocannons. And they are devastating, but they do little to no damage against shields, and they have a little less than a third of the range of the particle beams. So I tried them out, and I was able to get through basically every combat encounter that I had with this loadout. But I felt very limited in terms of my ability to deplete shields. So I'm going to take you out to Serpentis with this loadout. Um, and then I'm going to try two more. Now the loadout that you saw in the intro photos did not have the Hellfires equipped. If you noticed, it had four PBO-175s instead. And my recommendation, if you're going to run the turrets, as I have here, is to not run the Hellfires and instead run PBO-175s. That gives you a lot more versatility, you can do more shield damage, a um, little less hull damage, but if it takes you too long to get the shields down, you've already taken too much damage. So, this is the important part of the build in terms of the interior. I would say if you haven't decided on weapons yet, just uh, don't choose them yet. But the important thing here is you want to leave the builder and you want to make a save. Once you have your save, you want to run into your ship and have a look around and make sure that there is only one ladder in here. So I'm going to take you in 
and quickly check. You will spawn in facing the nose of the ship, so just give your Nova living quarters a check. No ladder there. Check the Deimos 3x1. No ladders there. The sides won't get ladders, so you don't need to check out to the outsides. And if you don't have any ladders at this point, it's only the one in the middle. This is just a redundant check, but just check, check your top deck. And yes, no ladders. So at this point you can load the save that you made before entering the ship. Because at this point you know that the game has already generated the interior of the ship the way it's going to be. So once you've loaded that save, get back into your builder. And the first thing you want to do is get two of these Deimos landers out of your way. Select those and move them somewhere. Delete these two Deimos hull A's. And then you want to use the attachment point, this is very important, on this spot right here. Make sure that's where your hatch is going to go. And I went with the Deimos Workshop 2x1. You can use any manufacturer you wish uh, and place that there. Now you can replace your landers and that is the completed ship. So at this point you can leave the builder and make another save just to make sure that that is locked in place. Go ahead and check your interior if you want, uh, but you're also safe to go ahead and paint your ship if you're ready. Once you're happy with it, there it is. The completed Aegis. Now, I know it's black and gray again. I'm a sucker for it. But uh, go crazy with the paint. There's a lot of cool opportunities here with the layering of the parts. And uh, the ship is complete. Let's do an interior tour, and then we'll get on with the combat. With the interior of the ship fully complete, I can now give you a proper tour of the Aegis. So let's climb back aboard and walk through the finished ship together. Spawning in, you'll be facing the nose of the ship, and our first HAB module is the Nova Galactic All-in-One Berth B. This is a 2x1 unit, and is one of my favorites, especially if you're building a small ship and only have room for one living quarters HAB module. These windows help to open it up a bit, and I don't think you really lose much in placing those in this HAB module. Rear of the 1x1 one one is the workshop. This is the Deimos, and I chose it because it has dark floors and light walls, just like the Nova Galactic modules have. You could do a stroud there, and it would be identical in every other way. Moving up to the main deck, this was one of the main reasons I chose the Hope Tech 2x2. Two two. Battle stations was this little sort of partition room here. The computer core connects directly to that room, helping to um, organize the flow of the interior of the ship and kind of give it a little bit more of a sturdy feel. And then you have this big fat power cable on the floor, which really lends itself well to the Matrix theme of this ship. Attached to the rear of the battle stations is the Deimos 3x1 living quarters and I really like the 3x1s because obviously they're significantly longer than the 2x1s and offer a, a little more of an open feel so for the main living space of the ship I felt this was very appropriate despite the light colored walls I still don't think it's too out of line for the Matrix theme do you need something? Now for the 2x2 two two battle stations, again this room where the ladder went was perfect. I really like how it broke everything up. And also just the way the main space of the battle stations is laid out. It feels a little bit tight and like there's these individual stations. Um, and, and again I think it's just really well suited for the uh, theme of the ship. Of course up here is our bridge, but 
before we go up there we're going to check out the top deck now for the hab choices up here uh, I chose the Nova armory because it has two mannequins the Stroud and Deimos armories I think look better but they don't have mannequins and for the captain's quarters I would have chosen the Nova captain's quarters uh, if it wasn't for the exterior shape of the Hope Tech have module that I think was better suited in this position on the interior of the ship. So here's our captain's quarters from Hope Tech again and directly connected to it we have our Nova Galactic Armory. And here we have our two mannequins on each side and these are clearly great for displaying some armor that you've collected. Not every HAB module has mannequins. And you have ample weapon cases and weapon displays, ammo displays, and even another weapon case back here in this little storage area. So that is the Aegis. It's a simple but efficient layout. It's easy to navigate and it's got everything that you need. So we're going to walk up into our cockpit which is visually the same as the cockpit that I used on the Helion but this one has a much higher cargo capacity. So this again is the Hope Tech Commander 500 bridge and you can only get it at Hope Town. So with the tour complete Let's take this ship out for a spin and test out some weapons. And with that, my next adventure is done. We are going to visit Serpentis shortly but I want to go over my character level and crew and stats before we do. So here's our ship with a quick look of the final statistics. And our crew we have aboard is Amelia Earhart, Andromeda Kepler, Eric Von Price, Marika Boros, and Omari Hassan. And as far as skills go, I have rank 4 in Anutronic Fusion, rank 3 in Astrodynamics, and moving over to the tech tree, I have nothing in Ballistic Weapon Systems, that's important for the Hellfire Cannon's performance. Boost Pack Training has nothing to do with ship combat, I have piloting rank 4, you only need rank 3 for this ship, targeting control systems rank 1, shield systems rank 3, I have nothing in payloads still, I have rank 3 in engine systems, I have rank 4 in particle beam weapon systems. I have rank 4 in starship design. Again, nothing to do with combat. I have nothing in starship engineering still. And then this bottom one is just boost assault training. And, as always, I am on very hard mode. So now it's time to pay our Varun friends and Serpentis a visit and see how this new weapon loadout works out.
if you couldn't tell, I wasn't very impressed with the combination of Vanguard Obliterators and Vanguard Hellfires. Now, basically for me, I need at least two groups of Particle Beam weapons to feel effective at depleting shields. So the first thing that I want to try is replacing the Hellfire Auto Cannons with PBO-175 Auto Helion Beams. We're going to keep the turrets for now. I really want the turrets to feel good to me and hopefully this is enough of a change to bring back some of that feeling of combat freedom that I am used to. So let's slap these on here and see how they do.
I did like that loadout and the turrets were very helpful in multiple enemy encounters but I had to try this loadout too. PBO 175s, Vanguard Obliterators, and Hellfire Autocannons. Now along with this change, since I no longer needed to mount turrets, I also decided to reconfigure the tail of the ship. So moving the tail landing gears back one space, adding a Deimos hull into the negative space that was left, changing the rear Nova cowling to the too long version and adding another Deimos hull A right there where that cowling was. So now we have a sleeker more tapered tail. It is uh, much better looking to me and I am going to go with this for my final build. I just wasn't a huge fan of how the Hope landing gear looked back there and the rear portion of the ship just looked really kind of chunky especially without the need for the turret mount there so taking a look at this from underneath in space you can really see how it lended itself to the sleekness and the organic nature of this design and I think this is much more successful now for the combat this ship is amazing it is incredible I fell in love with this ship when I was cutting this footage enjoy
if you've made it this far in the video thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you for being here thank you for watching my content thank you for commenting thank you for all of the overwhelming and positive response and support that I've received I wouldn't be doing any of this without all of you and you make this way more satisfying than I ever thought it could be uh, engaging with all of you guys learning things from you getting ideas from you uh, this experience so far has been incredible for me uh, I hope you continue to enjoy my content I have more planned I think there's a lot on the horizon for Starfield and even with the things we can currently do uh, we still have DLC on the horizon I mean there's so much more to come so I really appreciate you coming along on this ride with me and uh, I'm so excited for what the future holds for my channel thank you all again sincerely from the bottom of my heart and I will see you in the next one